This video is going to cover meristems and cambiums, both of which are tissue types that are responsible for incremental plant growth. Plants are constantly replacing parts and extending themselves. Since they can't move from where they're growing, this is a way for them to expand into more of the airspace as well as explore more of the soil to take advantage of the resources. The part of the plant that's responsible for all of this growth is called a meristem. The meristem is just a set of cells that are embryonic, meaning they're like stem cells. They don't have a purpose or a function yet, and they can become anything. And they're just constantly dividing into more and more cells. Once the cells undergo a process called differentiation, they become specialized for a specific function, and that's based on what genes are expressed and where they're located within the plant. Meristems are named based on where they're found. Apical meristems are found at the very tips or the apex of shoots and roots. Their purpose is to extend the body of the plant, and that extending growth in length and in height, that's called primary growth. Lateral meristems are found on the sides or the perimeters of a stem or a root. They increase the thickness of that part of the plant. This thickening or increase in girth is called secondary growth. Only woody plants that produce wood like trees are capable of secondary growth. This is one way they differ from palms, which are commonly called trees. Palms do not have lateral meristems, so they stay the same thickness their whole life. There's a couple of types of lateral meristems, and the word cambium is used to describe them. The two that are relevant to arborists is the cork cambium and the vascular cambium. The vascular cambium is located just inside the bark of a tree. It produces the vascular or transporting tissues, xylem and phloem. The xylem is produced to the inside of the vascular cambium and the phloem to the outside. So the xylem is what gets laid down as wood every single year. The phloem typically just gets crushed so it doesn't build up very much. The cork cambium is another lateral meristem that you find outside of the vascular cambium. It produces cork which is a protective layer with subarin in it. The subarin being a waxy substance that gives cork more of a waterproof quality. Cork in this sense is not the same as the cork that we think of colloquially, like wine corks or cork boards. That is made specifically from the bark of a cork oak. So back to the cork cambiums. A tree can have multiple cork cambiums, but only the innermost cork cambium is alive. A single cork cambium, the cork layers that it makes, and some other layers make up what's called a periderm. So you will also have multiple periderms, each of which have formed from a separate cork cambium. The texture of the surface of the bark is determined by how the individual periderms are laid down. So if they're laid down in overlapping layers, you have more of a scaly or flaky appearance. The bark appearance can be consistent within a species, so it can be good for identifying trees in general or deciduous trees in winter. Aside from that innermost cork cambium that's still alive, everything else is dead, and all of these dead tissues collectively make up the outer bark. You also have inner bark. That includes that live cork cambium all the way to the vascular cambium all of these tissues are alive. And so it makes more sense why people eat inner bark in times of scarcity, because it includes the phloems and the sugars contained in the tree.